Hello, I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. <clears throat> Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's, tu it's Tuesday, June 15th. Uh, we're taping today from Montpelier, which we recognize is unceded indigenous land. And we have a lot of information for you today, starting with regional and local headlines from Keith. Yes. It, and I have some written right down here. <laughs> You're so that, good. Uh, I came prepared. So the first thing I want to acknowledge is that our show is actually going to be airing on Saturday, June 19th, which is Juneteenth. And acknowledge that this is the date that's celebrated within the African American community. And it was based on you know, the enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas, two years yeah. after the Emancipation Proclamation had originally been signed, finally hearing that they had been freed. And they started dancing and singing, and it became the Jubilee Festival that has now become Juneteenth. And we've seen more t communities in Vermont recognizing it. Also communities all across the country. Well, no, but particularly acknowledging that Burlington for the first time is doing something this year. So That's great. Yes. And June is not only Pride Month, it's also Black Musical Heritage Month. So this week's trivia is one that most of us should get, and they got it first time. This bisexual African-American woman is called the Mother of the Blues and was a mentor to Bessie Smith, Louis Armstrong, and Tommy Dorsey. So write down your answer and we'll come back. So looking at events that are go happening around the state, the first thing I want to acknowledge is an event that's been actually happening here in Montpelier and it's called Queer Critical Mass and it happens the first Friday of each month. You meet in front of the Kellogg Hubbard Library, 6 p.m., and it's a four to eight mile bike ride. Mm -hmm. And it's, they say it's all levels, and what they assured us in the promotion was that midway through the ride, you get to stop and take a rest. Mm -hmm. And actually, on our next interview show, Kelly Arbor from Vermont Cares, who is the organizer of this event, will be one of our guests and to talk to us about how it came about and the future for this event. Also want to acknowledge that the Queer Connect Pride Caravan happens on June 26th. They have more details. Um, from Rutland, the lineup starts at 10 a.m at the Green Mountain Power parking lot on Post Road, then heads down Route 7. In Bennington, the lineup is at 10 a.m. at Willow Park, the lower parking lot, and they will meet at the Dana L. Thompson Memorial Park in Manchester for a picnic. Oh. So that should be a fun event. Uh, the Pride Center of Vermont also sent out the first notice that they will be doing a Pride Festival in September. Um, actually, it's a week of Pride starting August 28th, culminating in what they're saying at this point could be a parade on June 25th down Church Street to a festival at Battery Park. So we'll keep an eye on that. Also want to say we should be checking organizations' websites and their Facebook page because a fair number of them are starting to move from virtual to in-person events. Outright Vermont in particular is going to start doing in-person Friday night groups again. But what they learned from COVID is that there are some youth in truly rural areas that having the virtual option made the group more accessible. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a hybrid of in-person and virtual going forward. Uh, the Vermont Humanities Council, they do a summer book promotion every year. This year, they're focusing on LGBTQ plus youth. Mm -hmm. 
and it's looking at some of the most recent uh, behavioral risk surveys where our youth had a greater sense of isolation, um, increased substance use, suicidality, depression. So the book that they are going to be sharing is We Contain Multitudes. We've report, I think we reported on this mm -hmm. recently by Canadian author Sarah Henstra. And it's the tale of two teenage youth. And the synopsis said that some of the highlights, the issues they touch on are economic disparities, veterans returning from war, domestic violence, opioid addiction, bullying, and coming out. But before you get lost in the, oh my God, that sounds depressing in itself, they also said, no, 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 no. There's a strong theme of, this is a story of friendship, of poetry, coming of age, and aspiring to move beyond social expectations. So. May I just add something? Oh, yeah. Speaking of poetry, it, I, uh, Walt Whitman famously in Song of Myself said, I contain multitudes. Right. So they're deliberately echoing that. And that poem is an incredibly I joyful guess. poem. Yes. So I applaud the title. Uh, <laughs> well, and, it, and if the synopsis and the book are true to each other, it's going to take us from those thoughtful places to... A place of joy and hope. So that's what I'm. There are 4,000 free copies that are going out. Wow. And what the Humanities Council said is we're sending this out statewide so that large groups will be reading it at the same time. So it sort of elevates the conversations. And this effort is being sponsored, has been supported by Outright Vermont, Recovery Vermont, the Howard Center. Vermont Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence Youth Advocacy Task Force. And finally for this section, and then I'm going to do talk about a little politics the next time around. I know you're all surprised. Um, Seven Days recently had a pandemic all-star recognition. And we in particular want to recognize Paula Otenti, who was recognized, and some of us may know Paula from their role coordinating the activity of the Momentum Project, right. the coffee and chat, the Sunday morning. And a damn good job, too. And as was, and Paula was the person who did all of the technical maintenance stuff for us mm -hmm. for the Stonewall 50 rally right. we did on the State House. Didn't have to worry about you know, I said I would do this, and it gets done. But also associated with this recognition of the incredible work that they were doing was an acknowledgement that they are leaving the Momentum program. And because they live in Middlesex, they're going to become involved with the Central Vermont Council on Aging Board. Great. And, but fear not, the Momentum program will be coordinated by L. Covey, who was a Champlain College intern who some of us worked with as we were putting together the aging forum for the most recent town hall forums. So All right. with that said, it's well, fun. let's applaud Paula, a Yay. good friend and supporter. <laughs> yes. And, and good luck with the Counseling on Aging. Yes. We're going we're gonna to have to coordinate with them about. Paula, you know how to find us. Activity. Before you start, may I add something to Keith's commentary? Sure. Um, apropos of the Vermont Humanities Council, uh, I happened to see the presentation by the last uh, selection, the author of the last selection, which was The Hate You Give, Yes. and Angie Thomas. Did you right. happen to hear that? No, but I, you can go on to the Humanities website and view it at any point. It was fabulous. Okay. I really recommend it. So okay. I'm looking forward to hearing this next one. They're too, doing incredible author. work. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. very exciting. And the, the uh, facilitator of the conversation came out in the middle of it. Yeah. So that was interesting. Very good. We're everywhere. <laughs> and more places, hopefully. There we go. Okay. Well, the original pride flag 
unveiled at San Francisco Museum, was created 43 years ago. I'll have more about that. Uh, Brooke Eden arrived on the country music scene in 2014, where she kept a big part of her life a secret, her relationship with Hillary Hoover. In 2001, she came out of the closet and did an album uh, with some LGBTQ themes. Yes. Five years later, the Pulse nightclub shooting survivors seek to embody the strength of the LGBT community. It was the nation's deadliest shooting until a year later, 60 people were killed in Las Vegas. So. North Dakota finds a novel way to ban most conversion therapy. Yeah, well, this is an interesting story. Olympic ice dancer Caitlin Weaver comes out and the Rainbow Railroad says to President Biden, you need to make LGBTQ refugees a priority. 45% mm -hmm. of Americans believe employers discriminate, discriminate based on sexuality. We'll have that um, survey. Jerry Paul Smith of Blacksburg, Virginia was beaten to death on May 31st. A man he met on Tinder has been charged the accused is a sus uh, suspended <coughs> Virginia Tech football player, and he says he was angered when he realized the person he was meeting for sexual encounter was male. Smith died from a blunt force trauma to the head. His body was found the next day. David Etute, 18, has been charged. Trans man Poe Black was fatally stabbed in California desert community. Black was an artist and activist from Nashville. Slap City, where he was from, or where he lived, uh, is an alternative community where uh, people sort of camp, and it was like no Medlian. Um, and so he was there, he was 21. He was also indigenous and a member of the Wyandette Nation. So. Over the past few de decades, South Carolina has increasingly lent a sympathetic ear to those who say their religious beliefs are being discarded and carving out one exemption after another. I'll have more about that. Good news, Kamala Harris is the <coughs> first sitting vice president to have marched in an LGBTQ parade. Yay, so Kamala. That's good news. And, um, and she did it without fanfare. People didn't realize she was going to participate. I, I was thinking, can you imagine Mike Pence? <laughs> yeah. No. You know, what a slap in the face for that whole crowd. Bye. And, yeah. And speaking of that whole crowd, there's an evangelical preacher. Gordon Kilsenschmidt says Biden is recruiting. You'll love this. You can't make this up. He's recruiting lesbians for the demonic military. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Kinsel Smith is an Air Force and Navy veteran, and he says that Biden has a secret plan to expel Christians from the military and replace them with lesbians. No lesbian so, Christians, I guess. I guess not. <laughs> and you've had that special training. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and here's a, something that was a surprise to me. Walmart heirs stand up to Arkansas anti-trans legislation with a $1 million donation to various LGBTQ groups. Wow. Yeah. Go figure. Out Fox News host, this is another one. Out Fox News host Tammy Bruce said to be aware of human chimera mutants which she says the Democrats aren't doing enough to stop. I'll have more about that. I think it's Chimera. Yeah. Is it Chimera? It's spelled C-H-I-M-E-R-A. C-H-I? Because Chimera. C-H. Yeah, that's the Greek goddess of, yeah, well, I'll talk more about that. Okay. All right. Nevada hate group demands teachers wear body cams so they can be monitored for radical teaching. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up, I'm telling you. Oh, hell. Biden marks Pulse anniversary with a call to action. Five large corporations called out for donating to anti-trans politicians and a drum roll. The winners are 
AT&T, Anheuser-Busch, mm. Coca-Cola, General Motors, and NBCO. NBCO? And I think it's Nabisco, but I'm not sure. Oh, probably. Yeah. A Texas company, co uh, company faced anti-gay backlash over pride cookies. Oh, you we'll mentioned that last about time. That. I know. But <coughs> now I have more information. Uh-huh. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City lights up for pride. I have a picture of that. That surprised me. I know. Yeah. The San Francisco Giants bring the celebration of Pride Month into the field for the first time. They had Pride logos in Pride colors on their uniforms. Boaters harass a family with a Pride flag. A boat filled with bigots swamped the LGBTQ family on the water. And funny and not funny, but you know, their boat caught on fire. So I know. And the LGBTQ family rescued them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <sighs> the finale of Pose, no spoilers. I love the series throughout, but I did have a few comments about the ending. You? Yes. You're speaking? You yes. are speaking? I am speaking. Oh, it's an editorial moment. Yes. I think some serious editing might have helped. And see if you feel the same way when you see it. NBC cancels next year's Golden Globes for lack of diversity. And Cuomo's daughter shares her queer identity. The youngest daughter of Andrew Cuomo shares her queer identity and calls for allies to speak up against homophobia. Michaela Kennedy Cuomo used social media as her platform. In response, Governor Cuomo says that he loves and supports his daughter. So I think that's it, yeah. Okay, those are my headlines. What well, do you have, Ian? Um, no editorial comments on your stories. No, yet. not yet. yet. No, yet. <laughs> I know. <coughs> All right, I have divided my headlines by continent once again. Um, and let's start with Asia, where there are many stories. Uh, Hong Kong, there's mixed stories from Hong Kong. Um, a watchdog, an LGBTQ watchdog, slams the Beijing loyalists over the gay games criticism. Uh, one of the uh, representatives in the uh, voting body suggested uh, special, well, they're having trouble in Hong Kong finding accommodations for these people who are going to the gay games and participating. Um, and one, a representative asked for um, a measure of support for the gay games and two uh, other representatives refused in very uh, ugly terms. Uh, one person, Mr. Ho, said that uh, it was going to bring dirty money into the city. Uh, and the problem with Hong Kong, as we've all been seeing on the news, is that its parliament has been purged of progressives who would support the gay games. Mm -hmm. And now Beijing loyalists are being put in place, and um, fascism, I think, is on the horizon. But despite that, um, Hong Kong's LGBT community hails a court ruling granting parental rights for same-sex partners. Mm. It was one of same-sex parents. Um, and it was one more of those instances where a lesbian couple, uh, one, member of the couple had the child and then the partner wanted to be a full parent and this court agreed and said they could, but they the article said it's going to be tougher for gay male parents mm. who, you know, because that involves uh, surrogacy and so forth. Uh, speaking of Asia, now we have a, biz well, not so bizarre, but interesting instance with a lesbian couple at a safari park. Um, they went in on the Chinese um, version of Valentine's Day. They went in to um, the safari park. And in China? In China, mm -hmm. yes. 
and it's Chiamlong Safari Park. And I didn't know they had safari. They offered a couple's <laughs> discount. And so they bought the discount tickets, but when it came to let them in, they said, oh no, a couple, this discount only applies to a man and a woman. So they refused to leave, asked to speak to a staff member who said, um, see, I have my new challenge is I have double-sided notes. So um, he said, if you, this applies to only a, couples or only a man and a woman, and you should have known that when you bought your ticket. And so they have sued, and the... Um, did they get in, or did they have to leave? Oh, they had to leave. And they're <coughs> suing, and there's uh, a little bit of a controversy in the courts, and even their lawyer said, who knows how this is going to turn out. However, this is not the first time that Jim Long, the safari park, created controversy in a similar situation. In 2018, a person said on Weibo, the internet, that, a, that was a French pronunciation, I tried Weibo, uh, that the couple's ticket included this description that read the ticket applied to only one man and one woman only. At this time, the park said it would improve the operation of its couple's tickets and said that the park is open and tolerant to all members of society, but at this point, they've canceled the couple ticket hmm. altogether. So anyway. That's how they're going to avoid having to... Right, right. So we'll see how the suit turns out. Um, also... Good news from Asia, the India, an Indian high court has called for sweeping reforms with respect to LGBTQ rights. Um, it started out when two lesbians sued because they were being harassed and abused by the police, but the judge went much further than that and issued a broad ruling that called for um, Elimination of illegal discrimination against LGBT people. Uh, ordered governments, to, departments to report back. Uh, awareness training he um, adjudicated for. Uh, awareness training for the police, government officials to ensure they respect mm -hmm. LGBTQ rights. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty sweeping and um, Was that a higher court, do you know? or Supreme, yeah, yeah, a high court, well, the high good. court. Okay, um, a strange event happened in Kazakhstan, which is part of Asia. I have a picture before you now of activists Gulada Surzman, who's, Surzhan, who's on the left, and Zanar Zekerbeva, who is on the right, and they're members of this unregistered feminist group called Feminita. And what happened there, uh, this is so strange, they were meeting in a hotel and these thugs came in and started harassing them. So the police came, this is, the police came and instead of telling the thugs to hold it down and back off, they arrested the two women. Oh God. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's on Facebook, on their site, and it shows an officer forcibly grabbing Sekorbeva and manhandling her into the car. And then um, after she was shoved into the vehicle, another man opened the door and tried to pull her out by her hair. Um, he wasn't successful, but he punched her in the face. Mm. This is because they were being harassed by a lot of thugs in the hotel. Um, they were held at the station for eight hours uh, and interrogated about th what they were doing at this meeting. Then midnight, the police said, you gotta leave town. And they lived in a suburb, and so they wanted to take the train home, and the police said, oh, no, no, no. Um, they weren't charged, of course, but the police 
couldn't allow them back on their own. Instead, five police officers escorted them. And one, it was an eight-hour trip, and one of them even went into the bathroom. One, a cop went into the bathroom with one of these women. Um, he, they said they were being driven back for their own safety. Strange. Were the thugs out there? <coughs> Pardon me? There were only two women in this meeting? or <coughs> No, we... there were others. Oh, there are. But they were the only two who were arrested. Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> Reuters, another picture I'd like to show you of Gina Chua, who has been appointed executive director at Reuters. And this is significant for many reasons. She's... Um, she was born in Singapore. She's risen through the ranks of Reuters and um, is very accomplished. So she's been appointed head of the um, sorry. Well, she's appointed head of the um, She's been appointed to a high post in Reuters, at Reuters, and this is especially significant um, because she's transgender, and she's one of many, one of a few high-power executives who are being promoted and rising to uh, <coughs> prominence in the journalism world to Europe. In, in Hungary, the LGBT <coughs> community is once again up in arms because the content of a children's book has been, um, is going to be banned because, it, you know, this is the second time they've done this in the recent past uh, because it promotes homosexuality in their view. In Lithuania, which I reported on last time uh, as having defeated their same-sex marriage bill and thousands of people marching against it, the city, the second largest city, Kwanas, local authority has uh, denied the permit for the LGBTQ pride parade. Uh -huh. <coughs> and it's a typical pretext. They said there's construction in the area and there's it's not no... Safe. Yeah, it's not safe, exactly. Um, now I have another picture before you of Alex Maria Peter, a 23-year-old from Cologne who is Germany's next top model. And she's Germany's first transgender um, winner of this top model contest. Yeah. And uh, she's the second of the top model contest in recent past, a Hungarian transgender contestant. Wrong, sorry. A transgender contestant from Holland. Holland. So it's eight countries. Hmm. All right, let's go on to Africa where there's bad news. Ghana has denied bail for the 21 LGBTQ activists who were uh, detained having a conference about LGBTQ rights and how to raise awareness. Uh, they've been denied bail. Their hearing is coming up in a couple of days. Uh, so we'll see. Uganda LGBTQ shelter residents arrested on a COVID-19 pretext. Um, I believe it was 61 of them. But let me check that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, oh, here's the story about, <laughs> there are many, um, <laughs> all right, <Ian. laughs> all right, um, they've been detained, uh, there's no reason, they've been denied, uh, legal representation, and the pretext is COVID, um, although, there's no law against being in a shelter. So, 
Uh, that's that story. Now let's move to Latin America, if we may. <laughs> um, I, this is a terrible story. A uh, transgender Salvadoran was killed despite a long search for safety. Sasha Zuli del Cid Velasquez. Um, her family threw her out, um, and she had to leave, and she moved to San Miguel, and then she was threatened by gangs. So then she moved somewhere else, and she moved back to San Miguel uh, and was going along. Uh, she was well-beloved. She'd started a beauty salon, uh, and she was, you know, she was threatened constantly and had to move to other places besides um, the three places I mentioned. She tried to tried to go back home. They wouldn't accept her, but she she was back in San Miguel doing well, and then she was shot in the back while walking down the street. Um, speaking of violence, more than. 100 LGBTQ candidates are competing in Mexico's election. Hmm. And I have before you now a picture of Marvin, who launches, who she's launching her campaign here in a colorful s flare of smoke. Um, she's applying for a seat on Mexico City's Congress. She's here outside a restaurant last Saturday she will be one of the 100 members of Mexico's LGBTQ community participating wow. in Sunday's midterm elections that will fill 500 seats in the lower chamber of Congress as well as state and local posts across the country. Marvin is a transgender woman from the state of Oaxaca, uh, and she says, we have marched for many years to be taken into account. The name Marvin is a combination of her two legal last names, which she was required to use on the ballot because she's not legally changed her name. Uh, Citizen Movement is one of the progressive parties that has the most LGBT candidates, including 51 gays, 26 lesbians, 16 transgender candidates, and four bisexual women. I heard, like in some of the Mexican elections, that people are just getting killed. People are. I knew you were going to ask hurting. about that. I knew it. I anticipated it, and I can report. <laughs> Ninety-one assassinations occurred in the last election. Were any of them LGBT? I mean, because I would think that would be a huge target. Well, it's really profiles and courage that they're running. Yeah. That I could say that much. Running. That yeah, really, anybody's running. Yeah, yeah anybody no kidding. Running. So let's move on to Chile as I round out these headlines. Um, and kind of a shocker, the conservative head of Chile, Pinera, uh, Chile's president, has decided to push a same-sex marriage bill that stalled in Congress. So um, it's very Catholic. But of note are the rights of same-sex couples across Latin America. Uh, and let me tell you what they, where marriage is recognized, where civil unions are recognized, and then um, I'll continue with my Latin American stories Later. in my next segment. Can I just tell you where, all right. No. I'll wait. Thank you, friends. <laughs> now we're You've been very patient. <laughs> <laughs> we know who's in charge. Uh, <clears throat> okay, oh, we know so, who's unorganized. Uh, so Massachusetts, 29 of the 30 Republican members of the Massachusetts House, along with their Republican governor and their Republican lieutenant governor, have sent a letter to the chairperson of the state Republican Party demanding the resignation of state committee member Deborah Martell for her homophobic remarks oh. against the family and the openly Republican gay 
congressional candidate Jeffrey Sosa Paquette. Martel's objection and the basis for her homophobic slurs. Seems that Jeffrey and his husband have adopted two children. And she just, but it's interesting that it is from within the Republican Party that they're saying this is not acceptable and that the party chairperson needs to do something. Also looking at Massachusetts, Rufus Gifford. Mm -hmm. Now we reported on this months ago, but the nomination has finally been submitted <laughs> for Rufus to be the US Department of State's chief of protocol. Who else could you get to tell you what to do and how to do it and when you shouldn't? <laughs> but the nomination was unconfirmed until June 1st. Gifford is a former U.S. ambassador to Denmark under President Obama and lives in Concord, Mass. with his husband and their two dogs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> also, looking at events that have occurred actually in our backyard, we have reported recently on two incidents in Hinesburg, Vermont. Mm -hmm. And one was the homophobic posting of the now retired chief of the fire department and chalk drawings that mm -hmm. were done at the school that were LGBTQ pride themed that had been vandalized. And there are two adolescents who have since been um, charged with the vandalism. Well. There, the student body of the Champlain Valley School District decided we need to do more. So this past Saturday, they did their own Pride Day. They had a parade, they had speakers. Um, the Lieutenant Governor came and gave comment and support. And the Lieutenant Governor was there with her rainbow t-shirt on to show her solidarity. And the student who organized it said, we wanted to show our support for people in our community that don't always feel it. And that was a junior in high school who made that statement. Nice. And the, the last piece I'm going to do, and I'm going to mention it because that Ann Charles sent it to me, <laughs> Manitoba. Christopher Vogel and Richard North, they're in Winnipeg. In 1974, they were married in the UU church. And they tried to register their marriage, and it was nullified. You know, what the Manitoba Vital Statistics Agency said is, two men cannot be married. We are not filing this. We're not recognizing it. Well, they had subsequently filed suit, the most recently in 2018 asking that their 1974 marriage be recognized. And there was a final ruling last week that said, and, no. and the court judge said, no, you can't, that the marriage would not have been recognized at the time. I cannot recognize it now. And this is, a, this is an argument I think we're going to be seeing more as we progress on relative to marriage equality, mm -hmm. people trying to get relationships recognized for the breadth and le true length of their relationships, particularly as that might relate to Social Security, right. but being said, because it wasn't recognized by law then, we cannot recognize it now. So so what you got, girlfriend? Oh, those were some, what was it, the Supreme Court? They Didn't they make a decision about, like, um, they gave, uh, what's her name? Uh, Evie Winter? Yeah, the, her, her estate money that she was denied because they didn't recognize how long she was married or something, right? Okay, but yeah. her marriage was legal in Massachusetts at the time. Yeah. I, yeah. We're going to have to go back to Yeah, I'll have to get back to that. Okay. So we have the original pride flag was unveiled at the San Francisco Museum created 43 years ago. The rainbow flag is the most recognized LGBTQ symbol around the world. The first two flags were designed by Gilbert Baker and a team of volunteers, and they made the flag for the 1978 Gay Freedom Day Parade in San Francisco. 
The flag was 30 feet by 60 feet and flew over the United Nations Plaza. One was stolen and the other was believed lost. But more than four decades later, the flag has been located. So right. the original is in the museum. You know, they didn't say how they got it or where they found it. So I don't know if like someone turned it in after all these years or I don't know. Oops, it, it was on the closet shelf. Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't know it was there. I didn't know you were looking for it. <laughs> yeah. North Dakota finds a novel way to be in most conversion therapy. Lawmakers voted eight to seven to bar licensed social workers from engaging in the practice without going through the entire legislature. So this was kind of clever on their part. The committee authorized a rule proposed by the North Dakota Board of Social Workers, which handles the licensing of social worker examiners, deeming it an ethics violation for licensed social workers to perform conversion therapy. This effectively stops most conversion therapy from being performed on people of any age. Of course, this does not include religious institutions from, Kentucky, from con conducting conversion therapy. So. And 45% of Americans believe employees discriminate based on sexuality. IBM's Institute for Business Value found that 45% of surveyed Americans believe that their employer discriminates against <coughs> people due to their sexuality. They found that discrimination was more profound when race, gender, and sexual identity intersected. Um, and over the past few decades, South Carolina has inherently <coughs> lent sympath a sympathetic ear to those who say their religious beliefs are being disregarded and carving out one exemption after another. The court is poised to deliver the religious right another victory. A new major victory may come with Fulton versus the city of Philadelphia. And I, I keep repeating <coughs> this because it's coming up any time now. It has to be this month. Yeah, yeah. And the case centers on whether the Catholic foster care center can turn away same-sex couples. So... Uh, let's see. Oh. Out, how do I pronounce this? Chamara? Chimera. Chimera. Out Fox host Tammy Bruce said to be aware of human Chamara. Chimeras. Chimeras, mutants. Which she says the Democrats aren't doing enough to stop. The Chimaras. Chimeras. <laughs> Those things. Yeah are obviously from hell, and Democrats will have blood on their hands for not joining Republicans in stopping this while they had a chance. Bruce is referring to the $247 million bill passed by the Senate that includes this funding for science. Uh, Chimera. 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 <laughs> R. In Greek mythology, a fire-breathing dragon with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a snake's tail. She feels that these Chimeras. <laughs> are living among us already. She noted that Democrats voted down an amendment that would have prohibited U.S. Partici participation in research to create certain types of human-animal Chimeras. Ch yeah. China is already doing it, Bruce said. Oh, give me strength. I, I, I want to see the Kool-Aid that they're drinking. I tell you. <laughs> and let's see, what else do we have here? Um, uh, I think that's probably all I have for now. Um, yeah, I think I covered just about everything. So, Anne, you have a few minutes in which to correct myself. Correct yourself and to you know, the extent possible. And, and find your notes yeah. and all right. You know. Yes, I've I've worked on that during uh, your segments, although I enjoyed your segments and was informed by them. Um, the Uganda shelter residents, number twenty-one, who were arrested. Uh, a couple of people were 
released on medical, uh, because for medical reasons, but most of them still remain in jail. Um, let me give Gina Chua her due as executive uh, director at Reuters. Um, the editor-in-chief, Alessandra, wrote to employees to share that she will take up the newly created role. She's been appointed executive editor of Reuters, uh, based in New York and reporting to her, uh, reporting to Alessandra immediately. We stand poised on the edge of multiple opportunities to expand the reach of our journalists and journalism. Chua was previously the editor-in-chief of the South China Morning Post, and can we show her picture again since I'm talking about her biography, the, and the Asian Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal Asia. Uh, she was previously a senior editor at the Wall Street Journal in New York. Um, Uh-oh, you lost it again. <laughs> a reporter in Singapore, Manila, and Hanoi, and a television and radio <coughs> journalist in Singapore. She has a very distinguished career. She's also the co-founder of Sigma Delta Journalism Awards. A native of Singapore, she graduated with a BA in mathematics from the University of Chicago and a master's in journalism from Columbia. Gina transitioned in the late 1920s, making her one of the most senior transgender 1920s? journalists. 1920s? Pardon me? Oh, okay. Never mind. And she transitioned in late 2020. Did okay. I say that? I think you said 1920s. Like Please correct me. As you see, uh, you know, I could use all the help I could get. All right. Gina I transitioned. I thought she was our oldest living transgender <laughs> woman. <laughs> She is a transition in late 19, late 2020. 2020. <laughs> Last year. A, making her one of the most senior transgender journalists in the industry. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Please pay attention when I'm speaking. I, I know that there's a prevailing thought that people of Asian heritage have greater longevity, but that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go back to Latin America. Okay. I'd like to tell you about the rights of same-sex couples across Latin America. Okay. Marriage is recognized in Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Uruguay, and in 18 states in Mexico and Mexico City. No Panama. No Panama. I know. That I read a couple of upbeat articles, and I thought Panama isn't mentioned. Yeah. Uh, civil union is union is recognized in Bolivia and Chile. Um, so that's informative, I think, an informative overview. Mm -hmm. um, and my next and last uh, story yes. involves my idol friend. Not, I'd like to be friend, but I doubt that. Um, anyway, Kamala Harris meets with the LGBT, some LGBTQ people and HIV activists in Guatemala. Oh. Um, it seemed like a big meeting, but actually it was two people of an 18-member group. But they are Visibles Director Daniel Vitoro and Ingrid Gamboa of the Association of women living with HIV. Uh, they are members of the 18 group civil society who participated in a round table. And you know who else was there? I don't know if this means anything to you, but Rigoberto Mencher. I have unread on my shelf, I, Rigoberto Menchu, uh, bi autobiography of a Guatemalan human rights activist uh, she's a Nobel Peace Prize winner uh, and an indigenous human rights activist. She was there too. So uh, Ms. Vice President Harris said, when we, meet, when we met the last time, I was so moved to hear about the work that you've been doing, the work that has been about helping women and children, indigenous, LGBTQ, Afro-descendants 
people who have long been overlooked or neglected. Um, and the head of Visibles, who was there, said, we as an organization spoke about the importance of addressing discrimination and acts of violence toward LGBTQ people. Good for them. So that's an upbeat yeah. note to end my yes. segment on. It's better than the Chamaras. Chimera. <laughs> <laughs> Those creatures. <laughs> so the trivia question. Combination of LGBTQ plus pride, black musical heritage month. Mother of the Blues? It could be Gertrude Pritchett, who might be better known as Ma, Ma Rainey, Rainey. <laughs> subject of August Wilson's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is available on Netflix right now. This is a quote from one of Ma Rainey's songs. Went out last night with a crowd of my friends they must have been women because I don't like no men. It's true I wear a collar and a tie, makes the wind blow all the while. Don't you say I do it. Ain't nobody caught me. You sure got to prove it on me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So with that. A beat note. Exactly. Remember to resist. Thank you.